Hi everyone, Brian Hotzik here with NCSI. Today I want to talk about risk sense or Avanti neurons for risk-based vulnerability management. Now it's a mouthful, what does that really mean? Well, uh, vulnerability management is something that we've been doing in the industry for a very long time. Avanti has been famous for its patching, right? Actually solving those problems, applying patches, but vulnerability scanning was oftentimes things like, you know, Rapid7 or Nessus or Tenable. Um, and they would scan our network looking for things. Well, the problem is there's not a great prioritization after we've done that scanning. It kind of is left a little bit flat. That's where risk sense has come into play. It's going to help us prioritize what we should be doing first. So let's kind of break that down into the different steps and talk about where we fit into the equation. So what are most organizations like? Well, they've got a network with a bunch of stuff on it, right? They've got servers and laptops and desktops and so forth. They want to look at it from a hacker's perspective. So they add this vulnerability scanning engine. And there's a lot of them out there. There's common ones like, you know, Rapid7 or Nessus or Tenable, things like that. Um, we integrate with almost all of them. So it doesn't matter which one they pick. We're going to be able to integrate with it. And what something like Rapid7 is going to do is it's going to sweep the network looking for vulnerabilities. You know, it's going to scan your servers and your routers and your switches, essentially everything that you have. And it's going to come back with a report on those findings. Um, the problem is it's going to find a lot, you know, especially if you're a larger organization, you're 5,000 users or something like that, you're going to find a huge amount of stuff. You know, example of that is it could come back and find 400,000 results. Now, what do you do with 400,000 of anything really? You know, do you start alphabetically, start by priority? You know, where am I going to start on this? And then on top of that, patch management goes in these cycles next month probably going to find another 400. And then the next month, another 400,000. You know, that's just going to go and pile up. We have a couple of things inside of that that we usually care about. They're going to care about the CVE. Um, that is a common industry standard thing. It is like an identifier of that vulnerability. So it says, hey, we found this vulnerability. It's common on maybe several different platforms or even just a specific platform. You need to go and solve that. Then there's other things like the CVSS score. That's a numerical scoring system that we have from zero to 10, 10 being the highest, zero being the lowest, um, that tells me how exploitable it is. You know, uh, a 10, man, I gotta worry about that. I've gotta patch my computers right away. Someone remotely can go and hack into them. Whereas something is like a two, eh, maybe I'm even gonna ignore that. I don't care about it. So here's my problem. I, my pretend network, I've run my rapid seven scan. It's got me 400,000 results. Now what? Where do I start? You know, it's just drowning in too much information. They're gonna put it in a couple of buckets, but just, just a few, you know, they're going to say things like, well, here's high, here's medium, here's low. You know what? That's not good enough for me. You know, a 400,000, they're going to probably park. Okay. Here's 150,000 in the high. I still am drowning in way too much information where these fall short is they don't give me great next steps. They don't tell me things like criticality of assets. They're going to treat everything equal. A test print server is the same as your main ERP server that has all your customer data. It's not going to treat them anything different. So here's what we're going to do with risk sense. Let's not feed that information into their own reporting tool, something like, you know, Rapid7, Nessus, et cetera. Let's actually feed it into risk sense. So risk sense is going to do a couple of things associated with it. We're going to do what's called our VRR, which is our vulnerability risk rating. That is our own scoring system that's really unique. We've got things like CVEs and CVSS. Those are problematic because they are stamped on the vulnerability when the vulnerability is discovered and they don't change. The world changes. What happens if that vulnerability goes out in the wild and goes crazy? Everyone's talking about it's being exploited everywhere. Shouldn't it change the priority? Well, it doesn't in those technologies, but it will over in our VRR. We may even increase the recommendation, you know, take a medium to a high in case it's something we're now seeing out there. Um, or what about, you know, what's going on in the world right now? Uh, was there a big ransomware that ha attack that hit a big major vendor last week? What vulnerability did they use? Oh, they used one that's in your environment. You better focus on that. Um, and then additionally, you know, those assets. Uh, is your test print server the same as your main ERP server that has all your data on it? Well, no, they're not. They're different. So let's treat those a little bit differently and have a higher priority to fix production assets versus test assets, those kinds of things. So I'll show our, our funnel on how we're going to describe all of that here soon. But from a all right, here we have our weaponization funnel. As you can see, it's a very simple graphic that talks about the total number of findings. In our example here, we've got 121,000 findings. How am I going to deal with that? Where am I going to start? What is going to happen with these? Well, first of all, let's talk about weaponized. 
When you make a vulnerability, they just say, well, it exists in theory. Once someone's actually built a tool to exploit it, that's when it's now weaponized. So let's not want, worry about the ones that haven't been weaponized yet. Next, we have remote code execution slash privilege escalation. So remote code execution means someone remotely can trigger this. If I have to physically touch a device, you know what? It's going to be a lot more secure than if someone can, from a remote country, just send me an email or a command to exploit that. So that's remote code execution. Next is privilege escalation. Most of our users are not administrators. The worst they could do is, you know, uh, you know, affect their own local profile. But privilege escalation says break out of your permissions and get greater permissions as part of that vulnerability. So those two paired together, if it's both, then that vulnerability is suddenly a very important one you need to worry about. And then, like I said, lastly, trending. What's going on in the industry? What's happening right now? What are we exploiting out in the wild, not just in a, in a theoretical state? This shows that information. So as you can see here, this is our weaponization funnel. This is the number one thing I want to kind of show to our customers on what RiskSense does. There's a lot more to it. We can go in more depth demo, but this was meant to be a quick explainer on the concepts of why you would add risk-based vulnerability management system to um, selling to customers. Uh, if you have any more questions, please uh, contact us down below. Thank you very much.